today's installment of Big Al's Garage. Corvair pushrod tube seals. What are they and what what do you need to do with them? How y'all doing and welcome to another installment of Big Al's Garage. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit more in depth about Corvair pushrod tube seals. I touched on this briefly when we were doing the head removal a couple videos ago, but it's an important topic worthy of a little bit more explanation. Like most cars of the time period, the Corvair's valves are activated by push rods, and said push rods have to go through a void between the block and the head, unlike a push rod V8. These tubes carry the push rods within them, acting like a bridge of sorts. Oil passes through them also, and GM put rubber O-rings on both ends. Part of the problem is that over time, the engine heat just absolutely cooks those rubber seals. They crack, they fall apart, and as such, the push rods are one of the major sources of oil leaks on Corvair engines. Now, the good thing about that is it is fixable. It's a bit of a big job. In order to get these out, you have to remove the lower head bolts. Well, actually, first you have to remove the rockers, then you have to remove the lower head bolts. And you'll have to do a valve adjustment after you put everything back together. But if you don't want to blow oil all over the place, the replacement is worth it. And when you replace them, what you want to replace them with are rings made out of Viton. Clark's sells a complete head bolt gasket and push rod tube seal replacement. I will throw a link in the description. It's about $14. Viton better holds up to the heat of the engine than rubber. It's pretty much the closest thing you'll get to a forever fix for this issue. And one thing you always want to ask a seller when potentially buying a Corvair is, are the pushrod tube seals done? And did you use Viton? If they did not use Viton, you want to negotiate a little lower on the price because you're probably going to have to do that job fairly soon. And it's not the easiest job in the world. Like I said, the head bolts have to come off, valve cover has to come off, rocker has to come off, and you have to do a valve adjustment. Now, when you put these back in, you put them partway through the head first, and then you put the O-ring on so you don't tear it up, pushing it through the head to get it back in. I've got a little clip of us removing them. I'll show that here. All right, so here we are removing the push rod tubes, source of many oil leaks on the floor there. There we go. Okay. Those don't look like Viton. No, they don't. Well, that one was cooked. Yeah. Okay. They don't usually come out that easily. Usually you have to hit the... Oh my god. These things must be like ossified. Well, no wonder it's leaking so much oil. Well, that's one reason. But it is an important job. You need to do it. It'll save you a lot of oil leakage in the future. Definitely, again, Viton rings. They're available from Clark's. And the pushrod tube seals are not the only Viton components you're going to want to put in. I also use Viton seals for my oil cooler or any oil seal. If you can get Viton replacements, I would highly suggest you put them in. It will save you a lot of headaches in the long run. It will save you a lot of cat litter in the long run, and it will keep your wife happy. Well, that's about it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next installment. We are still waiting on some parts to put this thing back together. I've got my father is currently scrounging a new, scrounging a new set of head gaskets for the driver's side, and I am waiting on a set of exhaust manifold gaskets. Once we get those parts, we can hopefully put this bad boy back together and finally have her back on the road. 
Unfortunately, with gas prices the way they are, I will probably have to take out a second mortgage to put gas in the tank, but that's another discussion for another day. Till then, thanks for watching.